it worked out in the end, didn't it? Because Luis J. Gomez got himself on fucking Joe Rogan. I'm absolutely surprised. I'm not going to lie. Because Rogan is very sometimes easy to read. And you could you got the feeling that he actually didn't like Luis J. Gomez. He didn't like him. Louis, Louis, how do you fucking pronounce his name? And you got the feeling that it was a personal thing. So it's actually quite interesting to see that it wasn't personal. Joe didn't like him because he was taking the piss out of Brendan. So it also does um this it also does kind of pour, pour cold water on the idea that we all have that Rogan hates Brendan or that he's not his good friend. He clearly still is good friends with Rogue Brendan because he looks out for him. He could have on he could have Lewis he could have had Lewis J. Gomez on his show plenty of times. But he didn't out of respect of his friendship with Brendan, which says a lot about Rogan, which makes him look like a an actual good dude. Um, so clearly, clearly, Luis J. Gomez's plan to get back into Brendan's good graces by having him on Skankfest, by playing down the fact that he was, you know, constantly sending shots at Brendan. He now kind of played it all down, pretended it didn't happen, pretended it was one big joke and a prank, but it worked out because now he's back on Rogan's good graces. He got to fucking give him a little hand job under the under the desk as they're having a podcast, and now he's been made for life. Right? He's a made man now. Most comedians, like he knows that smile. Someone knows, like his life is gonna change forever. He's got the Rogan stamp. He's back in the good graces. Rogan probably enjoyed the pod with him. It wasn't three hours, which is kind of a magic mark you want to get at. It was two and a half, but still decent enough. Um, they started it off talking about weed, man, which is super cringy. You guys must have either really good weed compared to us or Rogan just really loves weed because the weed talk is so boring. Being like, you know, a middle-aged man being that excited about weed is like, I, I sometimes feel lame when I'm on Taz and I'm talking and fucking ranting about, you know, nightclub politics. Because it's important to me. It's my interest. But I know to a regular person, listen to me talk about fucking nightclubs, I sound like a fucking loser, right? It's like, bro, get go get a better hobby. <laughs> you know. So I think being obsessed with nightclubs is as lame as being a middle-aged man, being obsessed with fucking weed, like wearing weed socks and having a fucking bong and talking about how high you got like all the time. It's like, bro, just smoke like the rest of us. Smoke like the rest of us, enjoy it in your leisurely time, but you don't need to flip in, keep, you know, talking about it like you're a 16-year-old. It's a bit weird, but it makes sense, though, because if I remember from Joey Diaz's podcast, he said Joe always hated weed in the beginning. Do you remember that? Joe, Joey Diaz said that, that secret he revealed. Joe was always really super um, tightly wound up about his friends smoking weed. He didn't like it. He told them to not smoke He'd get annoyed by it. He'd complain about the smell and shit. Then he got into it really late. Maybe in, even in his late forties. So that's why he's, you know. And when Joe gets into something, it becomes the best thing in the world. But it is a bit weird, man. It's like Rogan, come on, bro. So they spent the first half of the or the first quarter of the fucking pod talking about weed, and then it kind of got a bit better. Um, they actually had good chemistry, which is odd, um, considering that it felt like Rogan didn't like him. I thought Rogan was actually enjoyed his conversation with him. But I was hoping that he would bring up why he never had him on the show, but he's not going to do that because it's going to have to be the Brendan thing. But I, I would have wished that they acknowledged the fact that Rogan was avoiding him. Because I remember Dave Smith would bring up his name. No, Dave Smith wouldn't. Dave Smith is a, he's a bit of a pussy. Like he knows how, he knows where his bread's buttered and he didn't want to upset the apple cart. But I think maybe a Big J show or something else, or maybe it was a Protect Our Parks. I remember a few of those guys were mentioning Luis J. Gomez in a conversation. Oh, Luis did that. Luis was funny. Oh my God, he's so dumb. He's so wild. He's so this. And Rogan will just like pretend he didn't hear his name and just talk about something else. So it was clear that he was not wanting to talk about him. But it looks like he only did it because he was protecting Brendan. He had Brendan's back which again is another indication for me, like I've always said to you guys, if you're those people out there that are wishing for Brendan to be out on the streets panhandling for fucking money, like he's Oprah and shit, it's not going to happen. He's got too many people that are super famous, super rich, who are in his corner. None other than Rogan. Rogan is ride or die Brendan. He might have his, you know, differences with him. He might not be happy that, you know, Rogan may have inadvertently exposed, you know, Rogan's very clandestine fucking cheating, allegedly. 
but he's a very loyal guy you can tell because the whole entire time i thought he had an issue with lewis j gomez but actually he was protecting brendan by not having so he was you know having brendan's back by not having lewis j gomez on the show which you know says more which kind of paints again rogan in a good light because i don't think those other guys would do that for each other if they were in rogan's position that's the funny thing about it rogan is loyal to these guys way more than they would be to him if they were in his position you know or if they're in their his position kind of thing it's kind of wild to think about it but um yeah recent episode of um the jerry episode number 2031 featuring Luis J. gomez check it out if you're interested it's pretty a decent listen to be fair and again he's way funnier on here than he is on any special i've seen especially that 30 minute one so definitely check it out because that 30 minute one was fucking horrible but this is actually pretty decent so big up him for that big up him for that what are you guys saying here in the chat um yeah joe used to be anti-weed yep exactly josie um eddie bravo turned him oh and i think and joey diaz so maybe i'm wrong maybe i got my law wrong but i think joey diaz explained the story so maybe it was eddie bravo I think, or maybe just Joey explained it. Josie said, Rogan says he didn't smoke weed until he was 30s. Shit, bro. That's a, that's about the same time that Brendan started drinking alcohol. Starting to drink whiskey or alcohol and then starting to, you know, take, you know, smoke weed when you're, like, that must be wild, especially when you got that kind of money. That No wonder they sound like fucking dweebs and you can indulge yourself and shit and you don't have to work a regular job where you have to be up at a certain time. No wonder they're all like children. It makes a lot of sense. Um, they were smoking on that Colin pack <laughs> soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> smoking on that Colin pack is hilarious. Um, 